Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome back to Millennia. So in today's episode, we're going to be continuing to move through the Bronze Age. Hopefully, get into the Age of Heroes if we can find one more landmark. Or perhaps the AI will send us the Age of Heroes. That's a chance as well. So let's go to Ender Turn. Hopefully, we'll also be able to integrate Ravenna soon. They only need one more turn till we have the ability to do so. But then we'll need 25 government experience. So we're going to let these guys heal for one more turn and maybe allow these two units to attack them while they're on the hill there. Same thing with these guys. Let's let them heal. They're kind of damaged. Uh, this guy's going to continue moving down here in the hope that we find goody huts as well as perhaps a landmark. Uh, Rome finished up the construction of the work camp. That gets us the two production, but also gets us engineering XP. It's important for the engineering domain, which will give us a few useful abilities, but also it'll give us a new cultural power that we really want access to. So while we could certainly use some of these buildings to get the experience, we're actually going to get a city guard. Our unrest isn't really a problem right now, but once we integrate Ravenna, it will start to climb up because we get a penalty to unrest for the number of regions we have. And this is only going to take three turns. And the research we're currently working on is going to be done in two turns. And once we're done with that, I want to construct the temple, which will give us one plus knowledge and one plus culture. All right, so I think that's it for this turn. And we can see that China is, in fact, sending us to the Age of Heroes in four turns. Okay, so much quicker than I was expecting. All right, well, at least we're going to the Age of Heroes. I really enjoy that variant age, even if we're not the ones to send us there. All right, so we're being attacked in both Ravenna, which you can see that they're doing damage to our city militia, but we should be all right there. And this unit over here has taken some damage. All right, so here we'll be fine with the city garrison. We can integrate them now once we have 25 government experience, which we'll have in two turns. Over here, though, there's a little bit of an issue because the Goody Hut is now protected. And we could attack that unit and we'd get it, but then we'll likely lose this unit because both of these guys will be able to attack us there. If we go on the hill instead, then only he can attack in this really weak unit. Because this guy would not be able to go up the hill after he moved. It'd be too much movement points. And so we don't have to worry about him just yet. I'll definitely regret doing this though if we're not able to get the goody hunt. We'll see what happens there, guys. But hopefully that'll be enough. Just getting the hill bonus. And we'll let these guys heal one more turn, give them a chance to attack us. We'll see what happens there. And it looks like we cannot move on, because there's another Barbarian unit. The Barbarians are kind of crazy right now uh, in this current version. It seems like they tuned them up a bit. I did forget about the scout that we have here. Remember, we sent them back to the outpost. And because they're set to guard, we weren't getting notifications about it. So we need to send the scout up this way, though it doesn't really matter, because we don't have to reveal landmarks now. So maybe we should just defend here because we have a Barbarian Archer coming and he would defeat that unit if we left him there. Our own Archer, I mean. He would defeat him. So I think it's best if we leave the, the Scout there for now just to help defend the Outpost because we don't want to lose that. We're not using it for anything right now. But remember, we're trying to keep that territory locked down. Yeah, you see they did attack there and... Uh, Seems like we barely won. Yeah, we did win, but just just barely. You see, our archer's not doing great. So he must have been shooting him the whole time. Okay, so I'm glad that we kept the, uh, the scout there, because I think we would have lost otherwise. So we'll leave him there a little bit longer, and he should also be able to heal a bit more if we don't do anything this turn. Uh, they're healed up, so we can attack this unit in the forest, or come help out these guys here. We can see there is now, wow. Okay, so there's another archer unit here. So we could just end its turn and let him heal a little bit. I think he would die with all these units around him. Yeah, he probably would lose in that particular case. You could move over here and then only two units would attack, but then you don't heal at all. The other option would be to use our warfare experience to get reinforcements. Now this will increase the health of the army, but it does have a cost. You do lose some of the combat experience. The unit doesn't have very much though, so not a huge penalty here. Uh, the biggest penalty is really that we wouldn't be able to get the volunteers soon, as we would be right now. That's another warband unit. So I'm gonna try and keep this guy alive. So let's go ahead and heal him up. Didn't fully heal him. We'll see if that was even worth it. 
If he just dies in the next turn, then it certainly wasn't worth it. Uh, let's go ahead and take out this unit in the forest. He gets the defensive bonus, but yeah, we need to come help over here. Or that unit's not going to make it. So he was attacked and he won. Now he needs to heal again before we go across that desert. Just terrible terrain. Uh, because he has healed, we could have him move over here. And then not all those units could attack us. So I think that's uh, the better option. And we did finish up our tech as well. So we now have access to the temple, as well as some improvements. So I think we're gonna get the scouting tech next because it would only take one turn and we can only use another another scout. But more importantly, we need to get the lookout building. We're not earning very much exploration XP right now. And remember, that's what we need for our national spirit. And it has the added bonus that lets us get through jungle and deep forest terrain. Now, I don't like getting this one uh, early on, but for one turn with all these bonuses we're getting, I'm willing to do it. I think it's worth it at this point. Since it's being reduced from being in the, you know, in the later age and then everybody else who's already researched it. So yeah, we're going to get that now. It is a shame that we're not going to get the innovation event in time. Did we lose that unit despite me using the warfare power? That's what it looks like. Wow. Yeah, just too many units attacked us, unfortunately. All right. So I have to go over there with this unit. That's a real shame. I wouldn't have used the warfare uh, points if I had known that it was going to go down that way. Uh, let's get these guys out of there and start moving across the desert. And uh, we'll use this scout for exploring over here. And we see it doesn't look like there's any landmarks in this area. So we didn't really miss out on not exploring that. So with the technology finished here, I suppose we'll start going towards the Age of Iron. That would apply to the Age of Heroes once that gets unlocked in just two turns. We also have the improvement points to get a dwelling. You see we have a new need here, housing, now that we've reached population six. So let's gotta get that constructed so we get our need efficiency up so we'll grow faster. And then also we need to construct something here in Rome. They have the city guard. And so we're going to go ahead and get the lookout just because it's going to take four turns and we need the exploration XP and then we'll do the temple. Yeah, I think we need to uh, to get that because we're moving through our wild hunters far too slow at the moment. We just don't produce enough of it. Uh, we're also at the 25 government experience so we can integrate Ravenna. And so now this is a fully fledged city that we can construct in. And so the first thing we're going to get is the city guard. As you'll see now that we have a second city we are getting a plus two for number of regions. We do get this uh, bonus of negative two for recently integrated, but that's not gonna last forever. So let's go get the city guard. That'll also help protect the city. Let's see how we did. It looks like we were able to win that battle against the archer. Excellent. I'm hesitant to remove the scout while the archer's so weak, so we'll just leave, leave them there. These barbarians are just such a problem, man. We're losing units over here. We don't have much of an army at the moment either. Hasn't really been our focus. Uh, no point of moving any further forward there. I guess this scout should come over this way. Uh, we can also see if there's anything in this area. Probably not. So we'll just kind of wrap around here and then go through this way, I guess. All right, so let's go and attack this unit. Or maybe we should go on the hill. They'll have a, uh, a bonus, but then we get the defensive bonus if they attack us. So probably the better way to go. It's not that this uh, unit is really under threat for most of these guys. Anyways, yeah, hopefully we can get that goodie hunt in the next turn. And yeah, just moving across this desert is incredibly slow. And being between these two barbarian encampments is an issue. We need to take that one out because they're going to keep sending units after our outposts. So you see they have uh, three cities as well. So we both have the three cities. So one of ours is, of course, just a vassal. And we'll probably leave them as vassal, which means we're going to want to get their prosperity up. So we get better bonuses. I always have trouble clicking on that. Let's go and end our turn, and we're entering the Age of Heroes now. Again, I really like this age. And it's unfortunate we haven't gotten any of the ages yet, so we just haven't been getting the innovation events. And that's a real shame because these are all the, the bonuses and the mechanics of this age. Uh, we're going to be getting it soon. But yeah, there's a really good bonus for the Wild Hunters National Spirit where meat will get a plus one culture. And it results in you like flying to the culture 
throughout the entire early game and well into the mid game because you'll have a ton of meat. So not getting that is a real shame. Very disappointed about it. Uh, but we do have a hero unit. They are named after heroes in mythology or even history. These hero units are amazing for a variety of reasons. First of all, they are a leader unit, so they get the, the tactics bonus. I'll cover all this in my beginner guide, which by the way, I did record already. Uh, but unfortunately, I haven't edited it yet. It took me far longer to record than I expected, which is the reason why this video is coming out uh, later than I wanted it to. So I still have to edit that, and it'll be out this weekend. Yeah, I go over all these different mechanics, you know, tactics, and all that kind of stuff in the uh, beginner guide video. But yeah, they have the tactics because they are considered a leader unit. They're also a pretty, a pretty solid fighting unit. And then you can use them to do these quests. So these quests are placed all over the map. If you see the one or two next to it, then that tells you they have to have a certain amount of experience in order to do that quest. So we're going to do this one since it doesn't have that requirement. And that'll get them combat experience as well as a variety of other really nice rewards. So that's what's great about the, the Age of Heroes. Frankly, I have found that, you know, we probably should have went through here. This would have been better. But I have found that the varying ages are always better. So we finally get that goodie hunt. And we did get uh, 20 government experience. You could do warfare experience as well. But I think we're going to do the government experience so that we can get another settler soon. And set up another city. And we also need to get more heroes, which the way you get those is by... Upgrading your scouts to heroes, so promoting them. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. There's not a lot, lot left to scouts. I mean, obviously there's still some train over this way, and we need to go over here. But you can send your heroes out to scout, and then they can do the quest as they go. And then of course you have the scouts that don't have any experience, so they can't upgrade to heroes. So those those scouts can be the ones doing the actual scouting. I think we need to upgrade them to heroes if we have the option. And there is, in fact, a quest right next to him here. It is a level 1 quest, and they can do it because they are level 1 veterancy. So we'll get to do a quest this turn. The Snake Spear is disrupting the building of an important dam, sending floods to batter the banks of the river. So we can go with this option, giving us 10 arts experience, something we don't actually have access to do yet, so that would be helpful to have. Also gives you 10 combat experience. That's uh, what both of these options will do. Or we can instead get the Engineering XP. Hmm. Well, Arts XP is useful early on here since simply because we don't have access to it. But I feel like Engineering XP would be a little bit more useful for us. Now we can just use the Public Improvements Domain Power to get 10 improvement points. Or we can save up to expand a town, which is probably what we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to go with that option. Alright, so that was our first quest. And yeah, they're just free bonuses. So you can see why the, uh, the variant quests are so much better. As they have almost everything that the historical age has with some additional bonuses. Now we are not yet in the uh, Age of Heroes. We still need to do three more turns of research. Technically ages are a global thing, so everybody is in the same age, but you still have to research it in order to get access to those new technologies. So again, that's going to take us three turns. All right, so this hero is going over to the legend. We won't be able to do this since we move this turn, so we're gonna have to just leave them there. Scouts coming over here just to see if there was anything in the area. There wasn't, thought it was worth checking though. And then these guys, we could attack right here and continue to scout with this unit. I wanted to come over here and take out that barbarian encampment. We've already seen one goody hut here though, so there might be more. So let's go and attack them here. Just to get rid of them. And then we'll explore that area. And then with the hero, probably want to go do the prophecy. There's a lot we can do here, but I want to stop Japan from doing this. So that's why we're going over there. Though the Golden Fleece would be the one we want to go to next, because the level 2 ones are the best. Though, there is a reason to wait to do level 2 quests. There's a tech that gives you a much greater bonus for the level 2 quest if you have that tech. But this one's so close to Japan, it might not be there. 
The AI is not great about pursuing those quests though, so maybe it might still still be around. I'm gonna go ahead and set up some reminder alerts. My uh, holding control and left clicking so that when we're able to do these things, it will let me know. Just so I don't miss it. I don't gotta always look over there to see if we've if we've got enough. We can go and close that here. We will not be integrating that bath, so I don't think. I think we're just gonna try and get their prosperity up and get uh, some really nice bonuses from doing that. All right, so this hero is going after the prophecy. They have their own hero here. He might have been going after that location, actually. Well, let's do the legend. Legend tells of a hero who would save the people in their time of need. Since this is a low-level quest, we don't get a choice, but we do get the 10-plus uh, combat experience and then 10 exploration, which is actually something that we very much need because we want to get through those those wild hunters. All right, so this scout, I suppose we'll move over. I'll see if I can get through here. Really, they should be the one doing the scouting over here. Unless there's like a goodie hut in this area, which I'm just gonna move back. Yeah, there's no goodie hunts around here. I feel like this guy should go after what we were telling him to do originally. Yeah, this is just... We should have him go back over to here. So what we were planning on doing with it. So we can try and take out that location. Uh, this unit's just gonna chill out here. We'll be leveling them up to a crossbow, or upgrading them to a crossbow, once we get, actually get the Age of Heroes tech. So right now we'll just tell them to skip their turn because I don't want to forget about them. Make sure we, we do in fact level them up. Well, we did get the lookout, so that'll increase our exploration XP. Also gives your uh, your capital the ability to attack back if any units come near it, and uh, we'll get the temple. Once that'll increase our culture and our knowledge. As far as improvements go, I'll we'll have to see what we want to purchase. We finally got the innovation event. It seems we got really lucky, guys, because we have not technically moved into the Age of Heroes. We haven't researched that, and so that's the only reason why I think we got this. It's because we had one turn left. And so we we're lucky to get the innovation event when we did. And we are going to get the plus one bonus to culture from meat goods. And so that's super helpful. And so now any meat goods, when we look at those, will produce the food and the culture. So yeah, incredibly helpful. All right, so let's go ahead and do this quest here. Again, a low level one, but it's going to get us some knowledge. That's always helpful. And that moves us into the Age of Heroes now. And we already got the bonuses from these, because again, we're technically in that age, it's a global thing. But it'll allow us to upgrade our bowmen to crossbowmen. And I think we should do these bowmen first. Do we have enough to do all of them? No, we don't. Maybe I should do this guy. And then we'll do the other guy later, since he's over here on his lonesome and at risk of uh, losing that outpost. All right, so he now has a level, and so he could go do this one here. There's the legend, and this one over here as well, but I guess we'd send this hero to do that. There's the twin's argument, too, that he could go after. So a lot of options. Let's go out uh, after this one, because it's, it's the closest one. And then these guys We'll move into either the hill or the forest here, though. I don't know if we want to go this way. Maybe we should go up here. I don't know. There are uh, barbarians everywhere, guys. All right, so remember, they're going to move up over to this location. Because that's where we're going to set up our city, probably. I don't see anywhere else to do it, unless you did it over here somewhere. Could set up here, so we don't have to worry about the outpost being taken anymore since we know we want to eventually get this location. That'd be an option. So we're gonna start with the storytelling tag. This is the one that gives the quest additional reward choices. So that's the one we're gonna to wanna to go with. I think it's only level two quest though. So I think that's the best choice here. It also gives you some other bonuses. The Hall of Heroes will give us knowledge and exploration XP. So both of those are something we definitely need. Hoets. If you work that, you get knowledge, and then you can turn paper into homes. I don't know if this is actually better than what you'd get in the historical age, because homes are art experience, where normally you'd be able to turn that into books, which is knowledge. So I'm not entirely sure if that's actually better than the historical one. 
I don't know if the historical one gives you knowledge for just uh, working it, so it might be better. You know, guys, we're going to attack this Japanese scout here. Probably won't be able to destroy him. But maybe. At the very least, they have a portion to flee. I just want a little bit of revenge against Japan since they killed our chariot. Irritated at them. So that's how we'll get revenge against them. Is there anything we can get with the improvements? No. A hunting camp, if there's anything available, there is, in fact, something here, and that could get us culture, so that would be worth doing. And yeah, I don't think there's anything to add to Rome. But yeah, hunting camps for our particular national spirit are something we want to get. Though, once we get the bowmen, we won't need the hunting camps. So that barbarian did attack our unit over there. We did survive, though. This guy's going to come over here and do that quest. And then I think we're going to go across the forest rather than going around the desert because it's the same movement cost and it's actually quicker. And you get a defensive bonus there if anybody attacks us, unlike the uh, the desert where you don't. So it seems like the better option to go. Uh, it's going to be 13 turns to get that. Moving across the desert is going to be super slow just to get that one quest. So I don't know if it's worth it. Just looking at other ones in the area. Because what you could do is come knock out these two. Let me see, how many turns would it take to get there? That's really not that bad. Okay, we'll do that. And then this unit will move through the forest. And we can spawn our settler. Excellent, so we got these reminders. Those things are really helpful. Nice quality of life bonus. And so it just opens it up for you as soon as you click on it. But do we want to spawn the settler in Ravenna to keep Rome strong? Or do we want to put it in Rome because it's closer to where we want to go with that settler? We can't really escort the settler right now. So that's something to consider. Yeah, we don't have anybody to escort them. I don't know if there's any barbarians over here. We might want to at least get this guy up this way to see if there's anything there. Yeah, we'll wait one more turn, and then we'll spawn the settler. Does that allow us to have one more turn to use that population there? Oh, wow. Probably shouldn't have gone here. We are completely surrounded by large barbarian units. All right, so let's uh, let's get out of here. This, this is risky. I don't know where to go, though. You go here, you're going to get attacked. I guess we'll go up this way. Uh, there's some gold located in the mountains here. So remember, we're going through the forest with this unit. And then these guys are going to go. It's the quickest way. We'll go up this way. Yeah, there's a barbarian unit there. So if we had sent a, a settler over this way, it would have caused problems. As far as where we want to set up that city, I'm thinking like maybe right here. Because then you got these three resources nearby. It's pretty far from Rome. Could also go, I mean, this is really the best location. Yeah, that's probably what we'll do. I'd like to get the coal in Rome, though. So perhaps we'd put a town for Rome, like somewhere, like maybe right here. Yeah, maybe like a, another mining town. We need a farming town, though. I'm not talking about some stuff you guys don't know what that means, but you guys will learn as we play. Uh, let's go and do this quest. So the epic quest of the Age of Heroes is to do four quests. And that gets you 20 exploration XP. And then also allows you to build the Parthenon in any of your cities. So let's go ahead and select something here. We're going to read it. You spot a body hanging from a tree. As you approach, it springs to life and tells a story. It asks for your judgment on the story's situation, but warns that you will die if you answer wrong. Now some people might not like that these quests, you know, don't feel real i guess uh you know you're talking to a tree here for instance but you have to look at it as the fact that these are stories being told about a hero you know like mythology so it doesn't necessarily mean they're true this is the hero came back from this quest and said this is what happened also when people are in a real like spiritual state they may see things that aren't there or you know they eat certain plants they might see things that aren't there uh so there, there's a lot of ways you can kind of explain this but honestly this game has all kinds of elements that aren't exactly realistic. Uh, so you shouldn't really look at this too much as like whether it's historical or not. 
because it's not exactly a historical strategy game. But anyway, so let's go and uh, choose one of these. Uh, diplomacy XP would be helpful. Do we know of any other minor nations where we're going to need that diplomacy, diplomacy XP? I feel like the only one we saw was this one here, but we might find another one in this area. And the uh, government XP, you know, we, we're already going to get the settler. We've done everything for the tribal ones, but we do have to change over to... We're going to be doing that now, actually. Hmm. This might be a little bit wor more worth it at this moment. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get it. Because we now have the culture that we can do a, he a peaceful revolution because we did finish up the tribalism. And so we can do that rather than having to do a violent revolution, which causes chaos. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll be able to select a new government. There's two available. Imperial Dynasty and the Kingdom. So this is a fantastic government type, particularly if you want to play wide, you know, build wide. It's for having lots of cities, because you can get these envoys and the settlers for cheaper. And it's particularly focusing on the uh, vassals. So if you have a lot of vassals, it's incredibly helpful. Wall. The Imperial Dynasty is more for building uh, tall, because a lot of the bonuses, all the ones down here at the bottom, are only for the one location where you construct the palace. And overall, there's some great bonuses, particularly satisfying need resources. And if you look at the like passive bonuses that you get, the Imperial Dynasty has more and better passive bonuses than Kingdom does. So it's just better overall for your, your cities, while this one's great for vassals. As of right now, we only have the one vassal. We'll set up more in time. I like them both. I think they're both uh, valid ways to go. You know, vassals are kind of overpowered with the prosperity. You can earn a lot from them. We're not going to go with this one, though. I think we're going to do the Imperial Dynasty. I like the idea of doing that. And I think it fits more for Rome. You know, we're playing as, as Rome. So having an Imperial Dynasty, you know, once they became the Roman Empire, they did have palaces and stuff like that. So I think it fits a bit more. So we're going to go with this one. But like I said, they're both solid options. And so we'll select this. This allows us to construct a palace. And because we selected that one option, we might be able to do both. Construct a palace and get one of these. Because I think the palace is 20. But we do want to get that immediately. So let's go ahead and put it into our capital of Rome here. Because you'll see that it grants some very nice bonuses. We get uh, 4 unrest suppression, 3 government XP, and 4 influence, so our borders will expand faster. And then we still have the points here to either get a plus 1 food, which would apply to both of our cities, or the plus 1 region level, which we don't actually need right now, and it would only apply to Rome. So we're going to get the food, because we can get up to 15 population at the moment, so I think we're good on the region level. Uh, we did get the city guard, seems like that took forever. So we could get the lookout to increase our exploration XP, or the town center for the government XP, or the council for knowledge. By the way, here's the Parthenon. So that gives you culture, bonus knowledge per completed quest, and five unrest suppression. So very helpful to have, but would take too long to construct it here in Ravenna. Could do the work camp as well, so they can construct a little bit faster, and then get that engineering XP. Let's do that, because yeah, that would help us. So we're going to get that for now. I like getting uh, production, particularly in a place here where we don't have anything that's generating production for us. We also have some exploration XP, so let's go ahead and get our bow hunters. I think it's time. While well, there's some great bonuses here, we need to get the bow hunters, guys. Not just for their military capabilities, but also just show you guys what they can do. We'll have to wait till next turn. They have a very... uh helpful ability and so I want to get access to those let's go ahead and defeat this unit here so that our settler will be safe uh, when does Rome grow four turns okay so let's go ahead and get the well we can't get the settler now because I spent all of our government experience that's right okay so that's unfortunate uh, but I guess it gives us time to get this wiped out over here I didn't even think about it I was just spending like crazy uh, but yeah, we can now harvest the goods here. So doing that is essentially the same as building the hunting camp. Except it doesn't require a population to do it. 
your unit just sits there and harvests the goods and then you get them back home so that gives us one more meat so that's three food and one culture and also gets us the ivory so that's a plus one exploration xp and we're doing that without having to use a population so again very very powerful they can kind of stack up and you can use them throughout the whole game and so you can have these guys just dotted over your, all over your lands and like we could get rid of the hunting camps eventually as you build those like there's really no reason to have hunting camps Except for the fact that you have to build those in your cities and can't use the improvement points. And eventually improvement points become incredibly plentiful. So I guess there's that. While you always have things to produce. I guess he's got to go over here. There might be something over there, but I don't, I don't think it's worth sending a hero over there when you don't actually know. So let's instead send him over this way. And then these guys are still crossing the forest here. All right, so let's go ahead and enter turn. I don't think there's anything else we need to do. And Rome's borders did expand. Now that the elephants are within our borders. We might need to wait a couple turns before we attack that. We can also upgrade that unit there. We have the military XP. All right, this hero is going to move down to here. And, hmm... I guess we'll go to the forest, try and go through this way. They might uh, attack us across the river, and you get a better bonus from somebody attacking across the river than you do from them attacking you in the forest. So, it, well, they could attack from right here, though. Yeah, they could go here and then attack. I don't know if they would, though. So let's just, let's just try it out and see if they'll attack across the river. I think it's a 40% bonus for that. So with the temple constructed, we're getting culture and knowledge. We're going to go after the Parthenon next. There might not be any more quests left to do. Yeah, there's a chance. We'll have to see. Maybe there's some that are over here that haven't been revealed. There's a possibility. Because, yeah, we've been really slow with exploring the map. Because the barbarians have been so dang aggressive. They did attack across the river, by the way. So that worked out nicely for us. Let's go over here, and uh, we have an 80% chance of winning, but we'll probably let them heal up one turn on the hill. Uh, let's do this quest, Twins Argument. So Nakula and Sahadeva debate between their superior looks and wisdom. So our looks more valuable, or wisdom, I say it's definitely wisdom. And we want the knowledge over the arts experience, so it's going to get that. Try and speed this up here. And this hero is moving over towards the legend. So yeah, they did attack us across there. Let's go ahead and do... Hmm. They won't be able to attack us if we go on the hill. So that's where we'll go. Could let them attack us to get experience. To try and level this up so you can make it into a, uh, a hero. Well, let's just move along and do some exploration there. Alright, so this unit here... I guess we want to form an army here. And just leave one of these. This is what we'll do. Which one has the most experience? The one that's less experienced is the one we'd... Oh, they're the same, so it doesn't matter. So we'll leave one here, and then this one will go over here. And uh, form a little army there that we can make, make use of. We need to let them heal just a little bit. I don't know where we want to attack next. Probably over here. I don't know if these two could win on their own, though. Hard to say, because those crossbowmen are pretty good. Yeah, I assume we want to attack that encampment. And what unit is moving over here? Just a scout. Okay. So nothing to worry about. So let's let them heal up just a little bit before we do anything. Uh, these guys are healed. I don't know that we've been a win there. Is there any other? There's a barbarian encampment here that's sending some large armies after Ravenna. And could also loot our stuff, so we should probably start moving over there. What's the quickest way? Well, they don't know what that is. So that's really why it might be gauging this is the quickest. But I don't think it actually is. So that'd be three turns. Here you gotta move through hills, so yeah. It's kind of difficult moving around here. Yeah, that's interesting. Alright, so this hero unit, there's nothing else around the area, at least not that we know of. 
We could have the hero help us take that out. But yeah, they're already going the other way. And then this hero is going to do the legend. And this will give us a 10 exploration XP. And that's just enough to allow us to pick between one of these three. So plus one food for the house and improvements. A two bonus food for meat. So that's going to be a really good bonus. Uh, help us grow faster. But I want the improvement points. Bone and Ivory will have increased improvement points. So that's the one we're going to get. So that's going to step up our improvement points by a lot. And we actually have the points to get several different things. But I think we should get the mine here to get access to this iron, which will cost 21. And you'll see why next turn when I chose that. So we can see there's another barbarian encampment there. Just looking to see if there's any goody huts or quest over here. Protecting this outpost is unfortunate because you got to use a whole unit to do that. Once we get castles, then that's no longer as much of an issue. So they did attack Ravenna, but the uh, defenders did pretty well here. So they'll be completely wiped out on their next attack. And that's another reason to have those town guards. Could attack Japan over there, but again, I think this is what we want to do here is attack this location. We only have the one line unit. Okay, so you know what? We probably should heal him up. And then, yeah, these guys are gonna come over here. Just go across the forest. And Hero could attack this unit, get a bit more experience. He doesn't actually need it. Would get us warfare experience though. Yeah, why not? And you know that guy's going after the outpost anyways. So let's take him out. And then this hero can go do this mission. He's almost fully leveled up as well. And he could do the Golden Police, but again, we're waiting to get that tech knocked out. How long will it take these guys to get here? I want to make sure we get it. He's going to be four turns. He would be just two. And it takes three turns to research storytelling. So we'll just go over to this location. So just hoping for a goodie hut, and there is one over here. All right, excellent. So still finding goodie huts. So nobody really in this area. So we see our reminder alert about expanding the town. This is the reason why I wanted to get this here, because our town is going to be a mining town. So if we look at this right now, we can't customize it, because it's just level one. It's currently earning us two wealth from the adjacency bonuses. Now when we expand the, and the town and make it a level two, we just now see now that it's earning us four wealth. Also, it'll have increased city militia so it can defend itself more effectively. But then when we turn it into a mining town, these are the options available, farming, lumber, mining, or coastal. When we turn it into a mining town, so now they're getting the four wealth from the adjacency bonuses and two production from the one nearby mine. But once we construct a second mine, you'll see that we are now getting plus four production. And so we're able to get this Parthenon much quicker. And we are also now working this location, so that's helping too. So that's giving us some iron here. So getting a lot of production in Rome, which is great. And we now need to make use of that iron. And so there's a, uh, a tech that we'll have to get smelting here. So that we can turn the iron into ingots and get even more production. And then those ingots, you can turn them into spheres for warfare experience or to tools for even more production. So we'll want to eventually get that technology. So we can't get that region level. We're going to wait. We're going to save it to either get the settler, probably what we'll get, or to get one of these two. I think we're doing pretty good in production for Rome, so I think it would make sense to get the settler. So let's go ahead and tell it again to notify us when we have enough points there. And this time we'll actually get the settler and move them over uh, over to that location here. So again, we're just going to wait until we're fully healed with that line units. Be an extra kelf, uh, careful there. Uh, we're able to defend Ravenna effectively against that rather large barbarian army. And this guy would not be able to win against a barbarian camp on his own. And he's coming over here to go after the Golden Fleece while this hero is doing the sacred regalia. So a lost heirloom has been found, a single piece of the royal regalia. One who possesses all three has the divine right to claim the throne. So we can get diplomacy XP or government XP. 
we're gonna do the government and so yeah we could get something here but let's just go ahead and get the settler and then we should be able to safely move the settler over here hopefully hopefully there's nobody here we need to kill that one barbarian that was in the area they probably won't be killed immediately depending on what size that barbarian army is so we'll get this goodie hut and you can get innovation or culture you know what guys we're actually gonna get the innovation here because 15 culture would result in us getting it and we could just do that with money instead innovation is something that you'd often use culture to get so i think that makes sense to go ahead and get it because yeah it's an option the cutting edge gets you the innovation so yeah, i think we should do that and we can also wrap all the way around here okay so this connected this little lake right here and then we need to go ahead and rush the culture and so we have a few different options we could do a eureka to get that technology done there could also create another town here in ravenna because they're going to need it soon they're going to hit their population cap and just uh, after getting this you'll see that population does slow down a bit we do need more units, so could get the spear and crossbow. I think the best choice is the Eureka, because we are a little behind on technology since we got extra techs in the last stage. So technically we're probably ahead in technology, like we've gotten more researched. But yeah, I want to, to get storytelling done. It's not only going to get us that, also gets these, these goodies, and uh, most importantly we can now start working on the next technology. While we do want to get the smelting, I think we're going to get the oracle first. That gets us uh, one plus art experience and culture. We're not producing any arts yet, so I do want to start working on that. And this prophecy arts culture power spawns a hero at the target capital. And these heroes are awesome, so I'd like to have more of those. And it forms a quest nearby, so I think that'd be useful to have. Also gets you the offering shine. We don't have any gold, but allows you to produce offerings, which gives you even more art experience. But yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and get this, guys. It's also only seven turns, so it's one of the quicker techs to research. So yeah, we're going to get that. Yeah, I feel like we should start uh, building up the arts experience. All right, so the settler is definitely exposed to being attacked not by a barbarian, but by the Japanese. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this guy over here, and then let's make sure we protect him because that scout could come over here and attack the uh, settler. So yeah, we don't want that to happen. And this guy can continue moving. And this hero, we should probably have him attack their own hero here. I don't know how he'd do. It looks like he's a better hero. So he should be able to win this fight. It's, it's going to be a draw. Yeah, I think it's worth trying to, to kill him. Yeah, we definitely won that. So we have far more experience than he does. Yeah, we don't want him to come over here and do this. Not that he'd be able to get there in time anyways. Alright, so unfortunately we're blocked here. And he'll probably attack us next turn and win and push us back, so you might as well just go. Just face the inevitable and go back around. There's really no way around that. You could use the experience to heal it up and then maybe defeat that unit, but uh, that's not what we want to use our exploration XP on. Anything else we need to do? Is that everything? Looks like that's everything. Moved right through that turn. So we should be able to kill him because he decided to move through the forest and that slowed him down a lot. We could attack that scout. We'd probably just force it to retreat though. So let's go back to what we were doing. Just taking this out and then setting up a settlement. More barbarians coming. We're finally getting our guys over here. This doesn't matter where we move. It's taking them forever. We'll do that quest for the Golden Fleece in the next turn, and we can wipe out this hero in this turn. Not that there's any quests we have to worry about them doing right now, but I just want to hurt them. So at least we uh, did something back to Japan. We took out one of their uh, valuable heroes. I think that's worth what we lost. Curious if they'd be willing to end this uh, hostile, this period of hostility. Probably not. Yeah, I expect that still want to continue this looks like both of our cities will be done with their construction in the next turn uh, we do need to get Ravenna a town 
So we'll do that with our next culture. Could have done that last time, but I decided not to, obviously. We got the Eureka. All right, so we're gonna move these guys over here. I don't know if we'll be able to take that out with just these units. And then we'll do the Golden Fleece. A lone tree stands in a grove deep in the forest. A shimmering golden fleece is draped across the branches of a tree. It's said to be a divine gift and a symbol of authority. So we can just get one of these two generic bonuses here, the diplomacy experience or the government experience. But because of storytelling, we have a third option offered to return the fleece to the gods via sacrifice. And this gives you one plus vassal integration per turn. It's actually not that useful for us right now, unfortunately. Some of these are really good bonuses. The, the third ones you get, but in this case, it, it's not. So we're probably just going to take the government experience again. And then we'll wait till we get to 40, and then probably just get the production here. How are we doing on housing? Uh, they don't need it yet, and they're, they're fine. All right, so this warrior needs to heal up. I don't think we have any uh, quests that we know about at this point to do. Nope. All right, so that's unfortunate. Yeah, not seeing any over here. So we might have to make use of that arts ability. So let's just go over here into our own territory and, and have them heal. And then... I guess it doesn't matter which way we go here. So we'll go over this way. And try and get over here without getting ourselves attacked. Uh, but yeah, both of our settlements has done construction. We got the Parthenon, on, so that's that bonus knowledge per completed quest. So we're currently getting 1.75 knowledge from the Parthenon. I'm guessing it's 0.25 per quest that you completed. So not a lot, but it really adds up over time when you think about it. Especially if you can complete a lot of quests. So we can get this here in just one turn. There's a lot of other, op other options that I think are a little bit more useful, like the Hall of Heroes. The knowledge and exploration is something we definitely need. And then Ravenna has finished their construction and got the work camp. Uh, we're going to go out to the council. Could also do the lookout. We need that exploration XP. But yeah, I want to get these texts moving along. I want to be the one who researches the next the next age this time so we can get that uh, extra innovation and be ahead of everybody. So we do have some improvement points. So we could continue to work on Rome. But I think with them having just lost the population, they're probably working, you know, all their, their population is working something useful except for, well, you have two here, not doing anything. We don't really need them working in a dwelling. We're going to tell them not to do that. It's just not worth the one gold. Constructing something here would be really helpful because you get the leather and the meat, so food and wealth. But the problem with Ravenna is that until we get the next culture, they can't really grow. So I think we should, in fact, get something over here. You know, I think we're just going to get another mine here, guys. Just really ramp up the production. Get more iron here. And then, uh, you know, you're going to get the additional production of wealth here as well. So I think it's helpful to construct around the, the town that we finished. Alright, so this will probably be the last turn here, guys. You see Rome's borders just expanded. And we're going to let them heal one more time before we do this attack. Although it is a 100% chance of winning, the problem is that we have these two barbarian units nearby. I don't want to lose the settler or any of the units, frankly. So we'll be an extra cautious there. We could wipe out this guy. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Kill their uh, crosswoman. Well, unfortunately, they did retreat, but we can kill them next turn. And then uh, the hero unit, again, doesn't have anything to do because we don't know of any, any quest. Unfortunately. So might want to start using them in our armies to lead our troops. Because they, again, do operate as a, uh, a very good hero. They're an extremely effective hero. Alright, so, yeah, this is kind of a risky situation. You go here, you'll get attacked by two units. This one's going to be crossing a river, so it won't do well. You have the forest bonus, but overall, yeah, it's, it's not going to go well. You're probably going to struggle against both of them. Could also go here and you're only attacked by the one. Do you get the river bonus? Looks like you will get the river bonus. Hard to tell where that river's going though. Yeah, I don't know. You might not get the river bonus there. Yeah, we'll just go here. 
But we don't want to go this far because obviously then it's you know we'll be in a more exposed position. All right, so let's go to get the two plus production on the palace. And so now it's only going to take two turns to get the Hall of Heroes. When we started this turn, it was four turns for us to complete that. I suppose we can do one more turn. Let's, this is uh, one of those games, guys. It's always just one more turn. I want to see how they do there. All right, so they were attacked by both units, and they weren't destroyed, which I think is the point here. And there's a scout here that we could attack. It's really weak, but we're not going to. Oh, there's just scouts everywhere, aren't there? All right, so we're going over here. I don't know that we should use the experience here, the exploration XP. Because again, I want to, to get the next wild hunters bonus. And then this army's fully healed up, so we'll go ahead and attack here. Hopefully we can finish it up since we have the two crossbowmen. And we're gonna get the knowledge rather than the wealth. And that allows us to finish up our tech. So we got those bonuses there. And we're just about done with uh, Rome's current construction. So next I think we're going to do either smelting. We already established why we need that since we have all that iron. Or another option, which would be solid, would be glory. We're eventually going to need the bathhouses for poor sanitation once our uh, population in Rome gets up to 11. Uh, then also this will generate influence and culture. The oven is to turn your flour into bread. We don't even have flour yet, so that's not necessary. The lodges are great for housing, though they do uh, result in you getting unrest. But you also get exploration XP if you work them. Probably wouldn't be working them, though. And then this will allow you to get an additional town. And then we've already seen what smelting grants. And of course, smelting, we can get quicker. Obviously, there's a lot of other good stuff in these ones, but you just can't, you can't get everything. You gotta kinda go back and get some of the stuff. So like, we could always go back and get uh, these tacks. I mean, this one only costs one. And the crane is helpful for the improvement points. And that's how you get the, the wheat and turn it into flour. And then of course this is really important. So you have to get community at some point so that you can uh, spend wealth to rush buildings and unit production. But yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking. Which one of those texts we should get. I like when I can leave it off with the question. Give you guys a chance to respond. Unfortunately we can't destroy that unit. Oh, that's a real shame. Because he's in the forest. He might not move. So you can move him here. But I assume he's going to go somewhere else. But maybe we'll be able to attack him and get him wiped out. As we move our hero over here. To help us. Now this hero is fully healed. I suppose we'll move them next episode. As well as select a new technology. And then yeah. Once we get the Hall of Heroes constructed. We can get the Oracle. We get the Arts Experience. And the Culture. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.